First off, this is not a complete story, and there is much more to what happened from the rival side. So look out for more on this war in the future. Anyway, the elite assassin Millas, EAM. The Enterprise, was a setter subgroup of the Blood Street Gang. EAM, as comprised of individuals residing in and around Brooklyn and the Bronx, among other places. Members and associates of EAM have engaged in drug trafficking and firearms trafficking, and have committed acts of violence, including acts involving murder and assault as well as other crimes. EAM, including its leadership, membership and associates, constituted as an enterprise. They engaged in a series of violent feuds with rivals of EAM, including acts of retaliatory violence against those who were believed to be responsible for killing and attempting to kill members of EAM. Some members sold narcotics in and around Brooklyn, and the crew routinely held meetings at which Enterprise members were expected to contribute money. Kitty it's called, and it's supposed to be used to provide financial support to incarcerated members, guns and such matters. Up until the date of his arrest, Chucky, held the position of godfather in the elite assassin Millas, which prided itself on its ruthless use of violence against adversaries. He led the group with a strong hand. Allegedly, he gained his rep when he was charged with attempted murder and various counts of assault and possession of a firearm. This happened following a shooting which occurred on August 7, 2007, in Brooklyn, Kings County, and caused serious injuries to the victim. I believe the victim's wife witnessed the shooting, and indeed the victim identified Chucky in a photo array at Brookdale Hospital to police. Chucky was about 17 at the time and had been arrested three days after the shooting. He would do some time in jail, but be home in the 2010s for another shooting. On April 30, 2011, Chucky allegedly shot a fellow E member whom he believed intended to harm another member of the gang over a drug-related dispute. As a result of the shooting, the victim's leg was amputated. Indeed, in 2014, less than three months after he was released from prison for and while on parole in connection with that 2011 firearm offense, Chucky was again arrested in possession of a loaded firearm. On that occasion, he brazenly pointed his weapon at a member of law enforcement. On June 16, 2014, Chucky was arrested in East New York, Brooklyn and initially charged with criminal possession of a loaded firearm and menacing a police officer. He was subsequently indicted for those, as well as additional crimes. On May 4, 2016, he pled guilty to attempted criminal possession of a weapon and was sentenced to 18 months to three years as imprisonment. He pled guilty to this offense and remained incarcerated until September 19, 2016, and was on parole until October 26, 2019. In July 2019, he ordered an assault on a subordinate gang member and trafficked drugs in July 2018, each occurring while he was under court-authorized supervision. Text messages from Chucky's cell phone, which was searched pursuant to a warrant, confirmed Chucky's position at the helm of the gang. Like many blood subsets, EAM was hierarchical in nature, and as the godfather, Chucky was empowered to direct acts of violence against members who violated the gang's rules. Communications recovered from Chucky's cell phone show that he did just that. On July 10, 2019, Chucky sent a text message to another person that read, Yo, Rizzo on the pound, and he gets a physical, meaning a beating. The person replied, Kopi. The Godfather is also empowered to direct lower-level members of the gang to facilitate communications with incarcerated gang members. In a series of text messages on July 14 and 15, 2019, Chucky communicated with co-defendant FaZe about whether FaZe would travel upstate to visit an inmate at Attica Correctional Facility. FaZe, clearly reticent about making the trip, asked whether Chucky's request was mandatory and then reluctantly agreed to do it, Chucky, you still gonna take that ride with a bro. FaZe, I'm staying in the crib I totally forgot that it was today that you asked me if I wanted to ride with a homie. I'm dumb tired hand to forehead emoji, but you really need me to go bro hand to forehead emoji cause if you need me to go I'll go, that's only if it's mandatory that you want me to go. Chucky, why the f you hang up with me to text me, go to bed homie, no rips in your jeans. Phase, shut up I'm on my way flat effect mouth emoji getting in a cab. Oh bro hand to forehead emoji cause, if you need me to go I'll go, that's only if it's mandatory that you want me to go. Chucky, why the f you hang up with me to text me, go to bed homie, no rips in your jeans. Phase, shut up I'm on my way flat effect mouth emoji getting in a cab. 
minutes after Faze reported that he had gotten into a cab. At 1.59 a.m. on July 15, 2019, Chucky sent Faze a screenshot of the identifying and location information from the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision website for an inmate at Attica Prison. In late March of 2015, an EAM member was found shot in the area of Shepherd Avenue and Glenmore Avenue in East New York at about 2 p.m. Jonathan, who lived just around the corner from where he was shot, died at Brookdale University Hospital. He had 13 prior arrests on charges including possession of marijuana, possession of stolen property and sale of a controlled substance. Investigators were looking into whether his killing was drug-related. Police release surveillance footage showing his killer running up the block with a gun drawn in both hands in the moments before the shooting. The gunman, who fled east on Glenmore Avenue, was described as having a ponytail and wearing sweepants and a hoodie. Almost immediately, EAM members and associates sought to retaliate by locating and killing those they believed to be responsible. Rack was another member of EAM, and his name served him appropriately. His criminal history shows multiple convictions for felony offenses. For example, on February 16, 2010, he was convicted of attempted criminal sale of a controlled substance in the third degree. On November 28, 2012, he was again convicted of attempted criminal sale of a controlled substance in the third degree. And on March 27, 2017, he was convicted for criminal possession of a controlled substance in the fifth degree, 500 milligrams of cocaine. Over the next three years, he would be involved in a series of shootings. In retaliation of Jonathan's death, on April 21, 2015, Rack allegedly shot and killed Michael Tenorio on McKinley Avenue in East New York. Surveillance video of the murder shows that Rack chased Tenorio down the residential block while firing at him, then continued shooting the victim after he fell to the ground. On March 7, 2016, Rack shot an individual, identified as John Doe No. 1 in the indictment, on Shepherd Avenue in East New York. Surveillance video shows Rack who appears to have been lying in wait near a parked vehicle run down the sidewalk and shoot John Doe No. 1 from close range. John Doe No. 1 survived that attempt on his life. But on June 28, 2018, there would be another attempt. This wasn't it. Another member, Day, participated in the attempted murder of gang rival John Doe No. 1. At this point it had been several years that members and associates of EAM had been trying to kill John Doe No. 1 as retribution for the 2015 murder of EAM member Jonathan Thomas. In 2018, members and associates of EAM, including Rack, Marlowe, and Bristol, engaged in a months-long effort to stalk John Doe No. 1 so that he could be found and murdered. Bristol had served time for possessing a loaded 9mm in an unlicensed cab back right before New Year's in 2010. Anyway, as part of the plan to attack their rival, these EAM members placed a GPS tracker on John Doe No. 1's car so that his movements could be monitored. On June 28, 2018, they drove Rack to an access road next to a hotel parking lot in Jamaica, Queens, where they lay in wait for John Doe No. 1 for approximately an hour. When John Doe No. 1 arrived at the location, Rack exited Day's car, stealthily made his way to John Doe No. 1's car, and fired repeatedly at John Doe No. 1, striking him approximately six times. Rack then ran back to Day's waiting car and got back in. Day then sped away. Again, John Doe No. 1 survived the attack, but this time, was left permanently paralyzed. In the spring of 2018, a feud developed between members of EAM and another individual, identified as John Doe No. 2 in the indictment. Almost three weeks before the attack on John Doe No. 1, on June 10, 2018, Rack and John Doe No. 2 got into a fist fight. A short time later, the two shot at each other, but no one was hit. Law enforcement officers later recovered one of the firearms used in the shooting incident from a storage unit maintained by Corbett under a false name. The feud continued, and EAM members 40 and FaZe conspired with others to kill John Doe No. 2. On July 28, 2018, exactly one month after the shooting of John Doe No. 1, a member of EAM repeatedly shot John Doe No. 2 on Glenmore Avenue in East New York, using a firearm provided by 40. John Doe No. 2 was left paralyzed by the shooting. Rack had series of posts on social media signifying street life. In one, he said, ninjas ride through the hood and grill until a bullet fly through the window. In the same month in 2018, he posted, we all got guns tell me who do you think you scaring. 
on or about January 1, 2019, at approximately 6.54 p.m., in the East New York section of Brooklyn, two officers with the New York City Police Department stopped a red Nissan Altima, having observed that the lights on the rear license plate were not functioning and the windows on the vehicle were heavily tinted. It was later determined to be over the limit permitted in New York State. Because individuals committing crimes at times turn off the light that illuminates license plates to avoid detection, the officers exited their patrol vehicles and interacted with a driver, who turned out to be REC. One of the officers informed REC that the vehicle smelled like marijuana and asked him to exit the vehicle. REC responded, Officer, I have nothing in the car. The officer explained to REC that he was stopped because he had tinted windows and the lights on the license plate were not functioning. The officer also repeated to Rack that the vehicle smelled like marijuana. The officer asked Rack to sit in the vehicle as the officer began to search the trunk. Rack initially obeyed this instruction, but then exited again, claiming that he did not trust the officer to complete the search because Rack had money in the trunk. Rack repeatedly refused to get back inside the vehicle and insisting that the search be completed in front of him. Rack then grabbed a bag and ran from the officers. After a short chase, Rack was apprehended. Nearer inside the bag, NYPD officers recovered five smaller bags containing marijuana. The officers recovered another bag containing cocaine that was distributed among 15 smaller bags. The cops also recovered a digital scale. Officers also observed a female exit the passenger side of the vehicle. During an inventory search of the vehicle, the NYPD recovered, under the hood of the vehicle, a firearm loaded with 10 rounds of ammunition in the magazine. Some of the ammunition recovered were of the jacketed, hollow point variety. Specifically, on June 10, 2018, a shooting occurred in the East New York section of Brooklyn, following which another individual was arrested as one of the shooters. Ballistic analysis of shell casings recovered from the scene indicated that two firearms were discharged. A caller responded to an NYPD Crime Stoppers posting and stated that the two individuals involved in the shooting were Rack and Individual 1. This the time when Rack had the fight and they had it all on video. The red Nissan in this stop matched the one from that day in the film and they saw Rack go inside of the hood of the vehicle as well. So, we are going to leave this story right here. The next time we come back around, we will be telling the story from the other side. But this about wraps it out for now, and as always, stay low and thanks for watching.